Hello, nerds. Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in Nerddom Supplemental Edition. For those of you that are new to the channel, never seen one of the supplementals before, uh, this is the catch-all. This is the, the stuff that one might argue is the more traditionally nerdy stuff, not the pop nerd kind of stuff. So we're going to get into some science-y stuff, uh, some technology stuff, and it's also, if we have stuff from another segment that needs to be updated, we'll do that here. Or if there's uh, something I missed in one of the other, uh, in the other segments, or if I didn't have enough news to justify a full video, then I'll put all the stuff here for whatever segment that may have been. We don't have any of that stuff this week, but we do have some other stuff to talk about, so let's hit up that intro real quick, shall we? Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. And I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commando of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. Nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Okay, so those of you who have seen the supplemental before, uh, you'll recognize that this is going a little bit on the quicker side because uh, I'm still editing stuff from Dink and Starfest, so I have a lot of stuff going on. So in order to keep up with these, I'm kind of doing it with the computer next to me so that I didn't I didn't have to do all the whole setup. So like I had to kick the ISO up on the camera pretty high, so sorry for the bad quality. Uh, but yeah, it's still going to get done. We're still going to talk about the nerdy stuff, so let's kick into it. Uh, first and foremost, I do have a correction to make from the movies video this week. Uh, the, I was talking about the release dates of the two new Godzilla movies, Godzilla King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, a couple of things that I need to clarify. Well, one thing I need to clarify and one thing uh, I need to correct because I misspoke. The clarification was I wasn't trying to make it sound like the movies had been announced because we've known the movies are going to happen for quite some time. Uh, the actual announcement was that the, uh, the dates had been set for those two movies. So that was what I was so excited about. I did go into a description of the movies because... There are, we didn't fully talk about them before, and there are, I'm sure, new people watching who haven't uh, had that conversation with us yet, so I just was continuing the conversation, is all that was. And the other thing is it's not universal. This is the correction. It's not the universal monster universe. It's the legendary monster universe. Legendary studios are the ones that have the rights to uh, the, the Godzilla and... Uh, Pacific Rim and that kind of stuff. So my apologies for saying Universal. Universal is the traditional monsters, Dracula, Wolf, Man, that kind of stuff. This was legendary monsters, and that's the universes that they need to cross, are the legendary monsters in the Pacific Rim. So, uh, yeah, just some clarification. Now let's get into the actual news. Uh, first up, we have two things from Google. This is for tech news. Uh, Google is at this year's I.O. Uh, developers conference and they've released a couple of pretty interesting things. They've shown us uh, the, 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 the early stages of, de of development for a couple of really interesting things. First off was one that I actually got from the Philip DeFranco show and then did a little bit more research uh, beyond that because Philip DeFranco is informative but he's not informative enough for a whole thing. Anyway. Um, it's the uh, Duplex AI, and Duplex is for introverts. This AI makes phone calls for you. This AI uh, does a lot of stuff, and it's really kind of creepy. Um, the, there, there have been significant amounts of trial runs with this that have not gone well. Uh, the example that they showed in their conference uh, was one of it going rather well. It was uh, somebody booking a, a haircut appointment 
with a local salon uh, through Duplex. And Duplex, like, was talking to the salon like it was this person's personal assistant. And it was, it was almost, like, it was almost Turing convincing. I still doubt it could beat a Turing test, but it... It sounded like we're getting really close to that point in time. Uh, if you don't know what the Turing test is, Google that because it's brilliant. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch played Turing in a movie. Uh, uh, Neil Stevenson wrote a book that involved Turing as a character. Turing is a very influential scientific mind of the last uh, of the 20th century. Um, so, and he has a, a test to to decipher whether or not you're speaking with an artificial intelligence or an actual intelligence. It's really, really cool. Google it. It's, it's great. Uh, the other thing... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> the other thing that Google unveiled the early stages of is they're changing their uh, navigation for when you're on foot. Uh, and this is really, really interesting. For those of you that don't know what augmented reality is, this is going to be a prime example of a great use for augmented reality. Augmented reality is much like virtual reality in that uh, it you need a set of glasses or some sort of viewing device to see the stuff. The difference is virtual reality is everything is made up uh, so you're seeing nothing that's real whereas augmented reality is uh, implanting things into the world you're seeing that are uh, digital. So Google is integrating augmented reality into their uh, their 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 tech for navigating around uh, anywhere on foot. Um, they have a little guide that they've programmed into it. So you have a fox. It, it, it's a fox is the guide, and so you have to follow the fox effectively, and it shows you where to go instead of. Like some uh, GPSs have the line or uh, things like that. It's an actual little character that you follow. And I, I feel like this is a really, I mean, it's really not super needed, but it's one of those things that's like, yeah, I can see why you would want to make your interactable uh, software more fun to interact with. Uh, it's really cool too because like now you can hold your phone in front of your face well not that people don't already do that but you can actually see what's on the other side of the phone now and it shows you where you need to go it tells you so let's say you get your you're in a play downtown and you come out of the theater and you're slightly disoriented and you're using your phone to get directions uh, to dinner. Now you, you caught an early play and now you want to catch dinner and then you're going to go home. And so you want to go to this certain restaurant and, the, and Google, uh, Google Navigate tells you to go north on the street. But maybe you're downtown in a major city and you don't live in this major city. Like if I were to go downtown Denver, uh, I'm not super familiar with the cardinal directions when I'm in downtown Denver. So it would take me a second. Whereas with this augmented reality fox uh, that they're tr they're integrating into the system, you just hold your phone up and look for the fox and then follow the fox. So it, it, it makes things, sure it makes things a little bit simpler, but not in a way that is absolutely mandatory. Still pretty cool though. And we're moving on. Next is a scary bit of tech news. There is a restaurant in Chicago uh, called Spice Food Company, Spice spelled S-P-Y-C-E, that uh, has no kitchen staff. And from the looks of the pictures, has very little front of house staff. Well, uh, how does a restaurant ha not have any cooks? It's all automated. Chili's in this same area-ish, roughly, has, has been doing test markets for uh, uh, automating their, their kitchen, uh, parts of their kitchen. So like if somebody orders a burger, then they have a machine that just flops a burger onto a grill and then times the flip because if, if your meat is exactly the same thickness every time and your cooking surface is exactly the same temperature every time, then you can time that really well for any... Uh, temperature it should you decide to do temperatures on a burger so it's just things like that that Chili's has been doing well spice has taken it a step further they had uh, a group of MIT graduates I believe or, or graduate students one of the two I can't remember 
I didn't write it down because I take bad notes. But uh, so it's a group of MIT students, be it current or recently graduated, and a chef, Daniel Balud, uh, work together to create this fully automated. So it's not just flipping burgers. It's every step in the process is done by a machine. Uh, currently, their menu is only four items deep, and uh, each item is is a bowl-based dish. So it's like pho and ramen and things like that. But because of their low overhead, because they don't have to pay a bunch of cooks, and because it's automated fully, there's very little waste, uh, it brings the price down. So a ramen, a typical ramen place, a good ramen place, you're gonna pay 15, 18 bucks for a bowl of ramen. At a high class ramen place, like you go to at like on the Vegas Strip or in, you know, like a five star kind of place that does ramen, you're gonna pay 50 bucks for a bowl of ramen. Well, at Spice Food Company, the, the bowls start at about $7.50. Again, there's very little waste. There is very little cook error because there are no cooks. It's 100% automated. And it, it's just, there's no cooks to pay. So they don't have, to, they don't have all that extra overhead, um, which makes it a very interesting situation. They get, there's no prep done in that restaurant either. They have a commissary which uh, this is something for the Renaissance nerd, uh, Renaissance nerd followers. Uh, commissary kitchen is basically a kitchen that I'll use uh, uh, Olive Garden as the example. Olive Garden makes very, very little in the restaurant. All they do in the restaurant is effectively just reheat the things. So they have a commissary that feeds into probably 10 to 15 restaurants in the area. That commissary makes all of the sauces, makes all of the uh, noodles, makes everything that they claim is made from scratch is technically made from scratch, just not in the restaurant. It's made by a smaller, uh, a fewer number of people in a larger batch and then it gets packaged and sent to the restaurant. So a lot of their stuff comes frozen or in bags and is and is just, it, it, it suffers in quality because they have to make it for transfer, transport um, and then also for reheating. Whereas if you're making it fresh, you don't have to put in as many ingredients to keep it fresh. Uh, so, so they have a commissary that does all their prep and then that, and then they ship it to the restaurant. So I feel like the quality probably isn't top notch either, but I mean, 750 for a bowl of pho or ramen or something along those lines, you can't really complain as long as it's not absolutely atrocious and full of salt or whatever. So yeah, uh, spice it's, this is Boston. I don't know if I said that, but I'm, it's in Boston and I, it, it worries me for the future of food because I do food and if everything's going to be automated, I mean, but that is the way of things because everybody's raising minimum wage and that's a whole different conversation we're not going to have. Uh, but then to kind of cap things off, we also on the supplemental, we talk about other things that are noteworthy going on around the YouTubes. Um, so this week, things that are noteworthy in the YouTubes, uh, Frog Leap Studios put out a cover of Folsom Prison Blues. We always talk about Frog Leap because I think Leo Moracchioli is a genius. The man does great covers, great, great covers. Uh, next, we have the Honest Trailer. All of these links, by the way, are found in the description, so check out the links down below. Uh, but uh, the Honest Trailer for Fifty Shades Freed, Always, again, always classic stuff. I didn't dig the Hot Ones episodes. So we're not going to talk about Hot Ones. Uh, Screw Attack, who does the Death Battle series, similar to the Superpower Beatdown, but different because it's not actors. It's an animated series. Uh, Screw Attack, aside from their Death Battle series, they have the DBX series, which is, there's no analysis. It's just a really cool fight scene between two fictional characters that you wouldn't normally see fight. Uh, this is technically from last week, but we're still playing a little bit of catch-up from those two weeks we took off. Uh, it's Daredevil from Marvel Universe and Kenshi from the Mortal Kombat Universe. They're fighting it out to the death. Pretty awesome. Uh, big fan of the outcome. 
I, you could probably guess why, <laughs> but that guys is the end of our supplemental episode for the week. What did I miss all across this beautiful nerddom? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If though you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website. Generally nerdy.net is the place you can do that, or you can get, you know, nerdy swag. You can get the social media links so that we can talk on the social medias or there's an email up there if you if you're a little bit more of a private person you still want to continue the conversation that is possible check out the website generallynerdy.net or you can support the channel a little more directly over on patreon patreon.com slash generally nerdy it's broken down all the different tiers you can jump on for just a dollar a month go check out the patreon patreon.com slash generally nerdy if you're new to the channel, though, click the subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap one of those boxes over there. The bottom one is news. The top one is going to be the Renaissance Nerd uh, playlist, so you can catch up on your how-to-cook videos. But before we click the things and do the stuff, guys, always, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>